Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another episode of The Seditionists. This is Keith Reeves, and I'm here with my compatriot, Rob Furman. And uh, we are going to get seriously contentious today, because if we've been saying right along, we want you to make comments in our video section. And if this doesn't get it fired up, I don't know what will. Um, as you know, here on The Seditionists, we talk about a wide range of topics that impact education, and something that is being actively discussed every time you turn around in the news right now is bathrooms and schools. Um, if you've been paying attention to the news, you know that recently the Obama administration issued an executive order requiring that all schools that receive federal funding, and let's be honest, that's basically every public school in the country, must provide uh, situations in which children can use the restrooms that match their gender identity is the language that they're using. Um, this is in stark contrast to jurisdictions that have said um, that students must use the bathroom that corresponds to their quote-unquote biological sex. Um, unsurprisingly, I have some strong feelings on that issue, and Rob and I are going to try to do a little bit of a little bit of a counterpoint. Does that sound about right, Rob? And that sounds great. Thank you. And I I, I find this conversation interesting because um, I'm very torn uh, in, in this particular element, as I am with with many things. I like to question everything. Um, I'm a man. I've always been a man. I I do not uh, have any of those. Uh, overtones, undertones, whatever you want to call them, of, of the different genders. And so I'm a little bit naive, I guess you could say, to some of these things. But interestingly enough, um, my son, who's in the middle school, is is dealing with uh, friends of his sort of becoming, uh, we'll call it gender confused right now, and, and they're sort of finding it. So I'm very interested to talk about this. I'm very interested to hear about this. And I'm also very interested to learn about it. And, and I think that's where this key is going to end up becoming for a lot of people is uh, it goes back to um, being, um, what's what I'm looking for? Um, not, not, uh, uh, not bigotry, but um, help me out here, Keith. Yeah. <laughs> not, not bigotry, but being uh, insensitive, I guess we'll use, to, to, to students that are, that are going through uh, this, this discovery of self. Um, so, so I would like to hear sort of where your position is on this, and then maybe we'll go from there. Sure. Well, I think it does run the, run the range, you know, it runs the gamut, because on the one end of the extreme, we must acknowledge that there are, and I know, I know of them, I know that they exist, um, we have to acknowledge there is one end of this that is about bigotry. It is about discrimination against the queer community, against oh. LGBTQ <laughs> students. On the far other end is entirely well-meaning and well-intentioned people trying to make good policy to keep kids safe that may be inadvertently making mistakes in the course of executing that policy. So I do think that there's a wide range. Um, for me, the issue is about, uh, it's several fold. First of all, is the restriction of elimination is bad for children. Um, we have an ample amount of research that shows that using the restriction of the ability to relieve oneself can cause biological damage to children, right? So we don't want anything like that. We need to have places where kids can go to the bathroom. Um, to me, it's about equal access, right? If you have a bathroom and it says boys and you are a boy, then you may use the bathroom. That's basically what the Obama administration has said. It is no one's right to tell you, Rob, that you're not a man. You just told the world on YouTube and internationally <laughs> that you are. It's no one's right to say otherwise. I have, and it gets a little bit personal here, I don't know anything about your biological anatomy in regards to urination. Um, we've never had a discussion about your preferences in terms of where you pee. It's nobody's business but yours. I think that same sovereign identity right has to be extended to all children. And as I mentioned before, I think there's one additional factor that really goes to the heart of it for me, is the fact that I, I recognize and empathize with the fact that schools have binary constructed facilities for the most part. It's just a traditional school mechanism. It wasn't always that way, uh, but there are many schools that have binary, public, non-doored bathrooms. What about students that don't conform to either gender? Gender queerness, um, uh, non-binary students, students who consider themselves agender, students who may be in transition. There's a litany of situations. And biologically, 
You know, you hear this counter argument all the time. There's boys and there's girls. That's never been true in human culture. Not once since humans became into existence. The range of estimates is anywhere between one in a thousand and one in two thousand births are genitally atypical and do not even fit the medical definition of male or female. We have to get ourselves out of this idea that everybody can be oversimplified into these two bins. And by having this conversation, we're not only able to keep kids safer, but also increase the equitability of access in all of our schools. Okay, so I'm going to hit you with the, the, the argument that I hear whenever sure. I do hear this coming up. Um, I'm a boy. You, you have no right to tell me that I am or am not a boy. But then with that being said, you can also not tell me that even though I may look, feel, and, and, and appear to be a boy, that inside I am not female. Mm -hmm. So how do we differentiate between me walking into a, a girl's bathroom and saying, you can't tell me I'm not a girl, mm -hmm. and some creep doing the same thing? And I think that's where, at least from a non-bigoted side, the more concerning side is sure. how do you differentiate? And then how do you get into a situation where you're not putting – girls or boys into a precarious position because somebody's taking advantage and not not you know doing this in terms of truth of being themselves but literally just doing it to be a creep sure well and i think that you know that that's a question that our society needs to struggle with is in in what ways do we want to approach that who is the arbiter in a situation like that and i wouldn't purport to have a legal answer to that to me the solution is we have to provide more single stall single individual restrooms which takes the entire problem out right i mean that's something that from a school construction perspective for us say here at yorktown for example we have a single stall restroom that's next to another single stall restroom and one of them they used to be the men's and female uh, men's and women's um, faculty rooms, restrooms. And on one floor, we decided to designate one of them the gender neutral restroom. Anybody could use that. We've decided that we need more of those. We need more than just one stall because um, there had been some geographic competition. One guy says, well, I don't care what it says on the door. I need to pee. Well, go ahead. I mean, that's cool. Nobody's saying that you can't. But if there's only one option, it precludes that option from being available to other students. And that is either insensitive or problematic. So, I think that the best solution to exactly the situation that you're describing is to have more situations in which you don't have to pee with other people. We've created a gender neutral restroom that is a single stall with a closing door. Um, there are certain degrees of concern that some people have about, oh, what will kids do in the bathrooms? But if you have that concern, that's a concern anyway. That is not a specific single stall or gender neutral restroom issue. Um, by having a single stall, you allow anyone, regardless of who they are, to just pee in private. And that's really what this is supposed to be about, is if people are concerned about other people being in the space with them when they're doing their business, then the appropriate thing to do is for everybody to do their business by themselves. Many European restaurants do this. Many of the most progressive restaurants here in Washington, D.C. do this. It's just kind of a commonly understood thing that you should be able to pee in private. We already do that in many cases for faculty, for me, it's just logical to extend the same right and privilege to a kid. We do it in elementary school classrooms. We have a single stall door in every classroom. Nobody seems to have a problem with that. But we've created, largely because of that whole factory prison church thing and the institutionalized constructed school, we say, well, all the boys go here and all the girls go there. It's such an artifact of outdated thinking, you know? It's not how kids are, and we shouldn't build our schools that way. I am sympathetic to the cost of retrofitting, but to me, it's money well spent. And, and that's exactly the red I was going to go is, boy, this really sounds like, once again, the old Industrial Revolution uh, bite, biting us uh, one more time. Um, you know, I, I do have, when you talk about the, the buildings that we have right now, I mean, I understand the idea of retrofitting and the need for that and all that kind of stuff, but the buildings we have right now do set up a, a certain amount of a problem. Um, I, you know, I have a male and female bathroom here in the main office area for, for all the, for all the faculty and staff and just by nature because i don't think anybody really cares we use either one right um it's not really it's never been an issue we don't turn into an issue it's only an issue whenever the media likes to grab it and turn things right. into issues um but i could see the difficulty when we have these mass group bathrooms um that's going to become a problem the idea of retrofitting it is good and really if you think about it even even the, the alterations aren't that big a deal. You take off the urinals, you add a few more closed cubby things, and it's right. really not as as dramatic as one might think. Um, me being a little more 
uh, not used to this idea. I had to tell a funny story. Um, when we were in Philadelphia um, for the ISTE conference, as mm -hmm. a matter of fact, uh, my buddy and I went to, to a little um, dinette club, coffee, cigar bar type of place, real kind of kitschy, real modern. Uh, it, was really, it was really a really pretty cool place. And um, I went back to the restroom, and as I was walking in, I was, I, I was in, um, this, this girl came out, came out of one of the stalls, washed her hands, and I was like, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. I didn't realize I, I walked into the wrong bathroom. She said, no, it's a unisex bathroom. And I noticed all the little – and the doors went all the way down and all the way up. And I'm like, oh, that's kind of cool. You know, that, yep. that's kind of different. So that was my first experience with it. And you know what? At the end of the day, I went to the bathroom. There you go. I worked. I lived. You know what I mean? So yep. it, it, I think the thing that gets really frustrating is people put so much energy into why it shouldn't or couldn't or can't. When we can just say, look, there's an easy fix here, guys. We got so many other problems in the world. Let the people go to the bathroom where they want to go to the bathroom. My concern is the, the, the creep factor. But again, you, you could technically have that anywhere. And you've got to, we've just had to find ways and policies to make it not happen. I think that's exactly right. There is a bit of confusion. I, I was uh, talking to a, a person in a retail store the other day who said, you reacted with shock that I would think that it would be okay for boys and girls to share the exact same bathroom, like peeing next to each other in the open. Nobody's talking about that. People just want to go pee. If someone is going to behave inappropriately in a bathroom, that's the problem. And nobody thinks that's okay. And my concern is that the amount of emphasis and nonsensical attention that's being paid to um, by people who are, are really using this as a proxy for their bigotry are creating more problems than they're solving. I mean, there's a conservative group that was sending, as you mentioned before, you know, non non-transgendered people, cisgendered men, going into the women's restroom and saying, well, you can't stop me because I might be a girl. That's just lying and being a filthy, creepy person. You know, nobody thinks that's a good idea. Um, I do think that the reason that I'm so passionate about the getting more of the single stall bathrooms is it takes that concern out. But at the end of the day, if a student in every way, shape, and form is female, it is no one's right to ask them to show us their papers about what genetics they have or to ask them to expose themselves so we may publicly inspect their genitalia. That stuff is insane, and it's really creepy to me that people would think that that's the kind of thing that would go on in a public school. The sooner that we get our hands around this, the sooner that we start to understand the importance of being able to eliminate yourself safely and privately, I think the better everybody's going to be. And, and again, I, I think, like you said, there is a, a, a relatively realistic, easy solution to this, and it's the idea of the single stall. Yeah. And, and, and you know, that I, I, I could hear now the argument's going to be, well, what happens when I take my class to the bathroom? Well, you know what? Again, that's a very industrial revolution style. You've got your 40 minutes, ding, ding, right. go to the bathroom, come back. we got to get beyond that. Kids should be able to go to the bathroom when they have to go to the bathroom, not when it's required by the teacher for everybody to stand up and go to the bathroom. Yeah. So you eliminate that, and then, and then it's not a 30 kids at one time type of situation. And as a principal, I could tell you, a lot of times those bathrooms become a problem discipline area because we don't go in to, to watch the kids to make sure, you know, so to make sure that there's things not going on. So how many times do we have paper uh, water blobs up on the ceiling and silly things going on? So right. there's some benefit here, too, you know? Yeah, there's a, a, a really great attorney, Brian Freeman, who wrote um, a major paper basically saying that while there is no extant case law that says for sure that it is, he makes the compelling case that any real jurist would find that bath, bathroom rights, the, the right to eliminate waste is a right and, and probably will be covered under basically any convention if it ever gets to that challenging point, if anybody were to challenge whether or not they have a right to use the bathroom. I think that a, a lot of people will be unsurprised to hear that. They say, well, of course you have a right to go to the bathroom. Well, if you have a right to go to the bathroom, do you not also have the right to do so safely? And really, I think that's the bottom line. We are engen endangering students by forcing them into situations that are unsafe, both psychologically and biologically for them. And I, I think we ought to stay away from it. Okay. Well, hey, I enjoyed that one. That was, that, that was an interesting one. I really hope people comment. Um, we are the seditionists on YouTube, so if you look right down there, you should be able to see the comment area, and uh, hopefully you can uh, give us your opinions on this. Keith and I will be very active on the comment bars, so 
Uh, if you want to hit us with questions, we're more than welcome to do that as well. Uh, this is our June edition of The Seditionists. Um, Keith, I'll let you wrap it up. Thanks very much, everybody. If you, like Rob said, if you have any comments you want to jump in here, we're happy to engage it. There are a lot of diverse opinions on all sides of this. Um, we welcome all opinions, and we're happy to address it as best we can. Uh, bring your best A game, and uh, make sure you've done a little reading on the subject, because I'm going to bring mine. <laughs> Thanks a lot, everybody.